the curious case of Henry Arundel, or not so curious, perhaps. That's what I'm talking about in this video. He's staying in Paris. He's not available for England over the next few years, sticking with Racing 92. But this is an interesting story, I think, potentially for the RFU and their hybrid contracts. I'll get into all of that in the video and speak more about Arundel's decision and why I think it's a really good decision for him at this point in his career. But you can have your say in the comments section. I think a lot of people interested in this as the kind of wonder boy of English rugby at the moment, the latest wonder kid, probably the next off the rank since Marcus Smith. It has a lot of people talking. So let me know what you make of it in the comments section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Let's get into it. So as I said in the intro, Henry Arundel has decided to stay at Racing 92, the club that he has only just joined. He's going to stay there for the next few years, essentially making him unavailable for England. And he had to make this decision really quickly. And something I wanted to say at the top of the video was, it's another example, I think, of the RFU just handling something so badly from what we've heard. So when London Irish went into administration and ceased trading, Arundel was the, a player that could leave, go to France and had a special dispensation to still be available and still be able to play for England. And he thought he would be able to play for England at the Six Nations at the start of 2024. And then it got communicated to him relatively recently that that wasn't the case. There seems to be in all sorts of wrangling in the background between the RFU and whoever else. And that ended up not being the case. So just weeks after landing in a new city, a new country with a new team, he had to make a decision about whether to stay there or to move back to England. Now, the offer on the table in terms of England was these new dual hybrid shiny contracts that the RFU are bringing in to essentially have more control over England players, have a bit more control over when they have them available. Um, and rest and all that sort of thing. So the RFU would pay a portion of the salary and Bath, who, who are the team that he's been most heavily linked with, I think would pay the majority of it. So those are the offers on the table for Arundel and he had to make a decision very, very quickly. Now, in terms of that decision itself, I really like his decision to stay in France. I'm disappointed he can't play for England, but in terms of his development, I think it makes a huge amount of sense. And there's a few different reasons for that. Number one, and we forget this, he's played a small amount of professional rugby. I know he burst onto the scene with England in that summer tour to Australia where he scored a try with his first touch. But following that, he had a really injury hit season with London Irish. He hasn't played in terms of minutes and in terms of games that much professional rugby for someone as old as him. So I like the fact that he's staying in Racing because he's under the tutelage of Stuart Lancaster. And whatever you think about Lancaster and the job he did with England and the disaster of the 2015 World Cup. He has a brilliant track record of bringing players through. That was originally one of the things that he was, one of the first things he did in his coaching career was the kind of pathway system for England and bringing players through. So I think he's a great person to, to learn under. And actually, I think Mac Hansen has been an example of someone at Leinster that Lancaster worked with a lot and how he's become one of the best fullbacks in the world, something Arundel has looked at and hopes that that happens with him. You then also look at it just generally. I mean, Racing 92 at Ludd Offence Arena, the Willy Wonka's chocolate factory of, of rugby grounds. I've never been. I'd love to go. Brilliant place to play your rugby in a brilliant team. I mean, you're playing with Sia Khaleesi and a stack full of other internationals, Gail Fiku, players like that. And you're in a great city, learning a new language. You're in Paris, earning decent money away from the kind of spotlight of England, where every good performance he'd have in the Premiership, he'd be spoken about in terms of England credentials and he should be starting for England. It quietens down a lot of the noise around him, I think, for the next few years. He can purely focus on his rugby. And I think the system set up there, he can potentially develop into a really, really excellent player. He's got the talent. We all know that. But it's now developing that and kind of smoothing off some of those edges, adding some things to his game, perhaps the more unfashionable, uglier side of, of being a back three player in terms of kick chase and all that sort of stuff. So I, that's why I think for Arundel, it's a really, really good decision. But for the RFU... And the reason I asked the question in the title of the video, is it damaging for the RFU? You've got to look at this. The RFU have brought in these new hybrid contracts, or they're trying to anyway. No one's actually signed one yet. Arundel's the first one who's turned them down. So that's not a great look for them. But they're bringing these in, this new thing for the English game, working in partnership with the clubs, having more control over the players. Arundel's turned it down. And then the other person who apparently is in discussions at the moment is Mara Toje, who can no longer be one of Saracen's marquee players. So that means his salary has to be counted in the cap. 
Therefore, the contract that Saracens have offered him is a big, big pay cut, plus he'll have the money on offer from the RFU. Or does Mauro Atoje, who's whatever he's on at the moment, 70 caps, destined to become a 100-cap England player, does he go over to France where he'll earn probably the same amount of money or maybe more money even, probably more money than is currently on offer? So we're kind of in this situation, I think, with these new dual contracts and will it even get off the ground? Will it just be a failure for the RFU? And will we see more and more England players starting to head overseas? Because if that does happen, then I think it opens the door for a change in selection policy for England and picking players that play in France. Because if a consistent amount of your best players are heading overseas, and we've already seen, I mean, Jack Knoll, Sam Simmons, Joe Simmons, Dave Ribbons, Joe Marchant, lots of players move overseas. If that continues to happen, it will get to a pretty awkward point for the RFU where they say they need to be able to, Steve Borthwick is the coach, saying, I need to be able to pick my best players. So that's why I think it is a really interesting situation. Let's see how it develops for the RFU and where they head in terms of these hybrid contracts. But as for Arundel, playing week in, week out in the best domestic division, I think, on the planet, playing with great players in a great city. What a great experience for him. And it's only a couple of years. I think he's still aiming to be back for the 2027 World Cup. So I think we'll see him in France for a couple of years. Then maybe we'll see him return to the Premiership. And who knows, where will he play? I wonder what will happen for the Lions tour, actually. Whether he'd still be, because he won't be playing international rugby. Maybe he won't be selected, won't be available for selection. Or he'll be available for selection. But generally, players go on Lions tours if they're playing international rugby. I wonder what it means for the 2025 Lions. But there we go. You can let me know. Let me know what you make of it. Henry Arundel, good decision, bad decision. And what do you make of it for the RFU in these new hybrid contracts? Comment down below. Like the video. I'll see you in the next one.